Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and look at my hair is out of control here. This um, this week's is sponsored by Swedish Fish. They didn't give us anything, but we got these Swedish Fish. Okay, whatever. Okay, so I'm supposed to speak about education this week, actually on apps. So I, I went into my cabinet where I keep everything. So I'll just show you three things. This first one is from August 1995, Radiology the Game, CD version. We did two of these. We did this with Nycomed on the back, doing it wrong here, Nycomed, that's me. And this was on the award-winning application on doing CT. Um, that was really a precursor to CT is Us, the website. We also did a lot of educational stuff on a DVD, and then on we started originally on VHS. This is Body CT for the Technologist. Let me move it up. Okay, there it is. You can see it. And that is I'm looking for a day here, 2002. So we did a we did several of these. Pretty cool. And then we also did our um, update for the Technologist, and also Radiologist. On CD, this is 2008. This is the last time I think we did that. And then, really, everything we did from then on literally went to the web. So, in saying that, you know, it's a change. I think, you know, several things that are good about the web. I mean, obviously, a lot of things are good. When you made CDs like this, if you made a mistake, you would toast. Testing was very hard because you had to go through every practical way of doing things. And of course, as a user, you might press the buttons differently than me testing, and that makes it really hard. Testing is one of the most difficult things we do. Um, with On the web, you have an app. You have it on the Apple Store. If someone found a mistake, somehow you can go back in and just update it, and everybody would be happy. So um, in some sense, it's better. Also, for users, I mean, obviously, how many of you have uh, VHS players anymore? Probably zero. How many of you have CD players anymore? The only people with CD players besides me are people who haven't upgraded their computer in a long time because all computers had CD players. Now the computers don't, right? So a CD is not going to help you all that much. You know, just think about all the music you have. Uh, I still buy CDs. I like to own something. But people will download the music or they go on uh, Sirius or the Apple music. So there are th differences. but. One of the things, of course, we do the web, and we do things like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you're looking at Facebook Live now, and there's certain really, really good things about that, because this is live, and this is today, and it's October 4th, I believe, so we're really up to date. The apps are an interesting thing. The apps really, everything started with the Apple Store, because it provided a way of doing things that was easy, and economical, and that you had control over. So for example, in the past, if I wanted to publish something, I would have had to use the publisher, Elsevier, William Wilkins, somebody else, if they wanted to do it or not do it. Now with the Apple Store, you submit for free. Apple was very smart, they don't charge you. And in fact, if we give the apps away like we do, we don't need to pay Apple something, because you can say Apple should say, well, if we don't make enough money from you, we can charge you. Maybe they will someday. But I think they probably figure that, hey, if you're stupid enough to give it away, they'll give it away also. And perhaps someday you'll come to your senses. When you charge, we get a 30%. And so the model for the Apple store is a really good one. They do the billing. They do the marketing in some sense. They make it available. They keep the web updated. They get 30%, you get 70%. So in some sense, it's a good model, particularly with you not being the one collecting. And remember, when you buy something on the App Store, you pay up front. It's not 90 days. You're not chasing down the person. You're not chasing down the hospital. The Apple Store model is very good. You don't pay, you don't get it, bottom line. So how do we decide on the apps? If you go to the Apple App Store today and type in CTSS, you will see 15 apps that we have available. Um, those apps are for the iPad. Eight of them also are for the iPhone or other iDevices. The reason we don't put some things on the iPad is they would, on the iPhone rather, is that 
they would be too small and it would be hard to use. So we don't want to have a, a bad product because theoretically you could put anything on an iPhone if you wanted to. It would just be so small. It would not be useful. So iPad, iPhone, different apps. And it's very clear when you go to the store uh, what you're choosing. So that's not a problem. And we've been pretty successful. You know, we've uh, won the last two in mini awards. Not that that's the all in or all out process of how we do things, but we won those two, and I think we we're finalists a couple years before that, and we're finalists this year, and hopefully we'll win. But one thing about our apps, and actually the one that's nominated this year, is uh, the uh, our teaching file, our quiz app, CTSSI quiz, as the latest and greatest app for this year. And it's true, we do have a new version this year, and in fact, we're about to have another new version. I'm just running a little bit late, and... Uh, when I finish it, when I give it to Sarah, she'll have it done in a couple of days, and hopefully by the end of next week or so, we'll be on the Apple Store. But the fact is, although it's a new app, and we hope to win the award from Aunt Mini, it's actually about the 25th version of that app, because we update that app every three months for a number of years. Now we've stretched it out to every six months. Uh, we build, and we use a lot of material from CTSS, right? Because the quiz is actually a monthly quiz. We have a quiz every month, 10 cases. The iQuiz app does things a little bit better in the sense that it organizes things not just by the month. So if you want to look at December 20, December 2017, you can do that. But it puts things like in pancreas, liver, kidneys, adrenal, 15 categories, well over 1,000 cases, which means it's 12 times uh, uh, 10 cases a month, 120, over 1,000 means it's nine years worth of material. There are spectacular cases. Each is a quiz. Each has pearls. Uh, each has a discussion by me about the topic. So it's a very classic way. So one of the things we do on CTSS is material that our users find very valuable. That means things you guys like. We will, not, we will sometimes repackage it. Or, or use the material in a way that's a bit different and then build on it. So for example, what are things that we've been doing? Well, the last two years we've worked on checklists. We have an adrenal and pancreas checklist. Both are excellent. I'm working on a liver checklist. It's a way of kind of going through and thinking about how we approach an adrenal mass or pancreatic mass or a uh, liver mass. And I know the app is really good in all modesty because the, the people we work with, our colleagues from the undergraduate campus working on deep learning on pancreas, use the app to teach them how to think about looking at pancreas. And so when they do AI, they're building in a lot of the thought process we use on how we approach things on our app. We then have an app called Critical Measurements. This was an app Pam Johnson uh, did about two years ago. And just a spectacular app. It's measurements on anything and everything you want to get measurements on, on CT. Uh, should this stupendous job, you could look at its references. Just a very, very excellent app, regardless of where you are in residency fellowship or in, in a real, being a real radiologist. We then have two apps that we're building out, which are just kind of fun apps. They're actually fairly easy for us to do. They're apps where it's a quiz. We show you a case, you tell us the answer. You can do it as a timer, you can do it as slow as you want or as fast as you want. There are many ways of using it, but we have one app on ER, 50 cases, one app on Pancras. The Pancras app is pretty new, the other one's about a year old. And if people continue to like it, we'll probably do more apps. It's actually something that's not that hard for me to do. We then have an app of Pearls which basically shows you all the pearls we have. Again, breaks it up by topic and section. It's basically a walking encyclopedia. You can look at liver masses benign. You get 100 pearls of wisdom on everything you really do need to know. We also have an app, which is our lecture series. The lecture series, remember, we have a lecture every Monday, um, and which means we have 52 lectures a year. Again, we have about 800 or so lectures. Um, we do it by topic, so you go to pancreas, you go to adrenal, you go to kidney, you go to liver, and there's lectures. There's new lectures, some older lectures, different topics. So as we keep expanding CTSS, as we keep growing the lecture series, this app will continue to grow. It's a very nice way. You can find all the information, of course, online, but when you're, when you're walking around or you're in your car, 
when you're, uh, you know, sitting under the stars, you can listen to us talk to you about any of many topics. It's very easy to use. The newest versions also keep track of what you've looked at, keep track of what's new, show you what you need to do, and so that is very, very good in that regard. I mentioned that we have eye pearls, uh, all of the key pearls we have. We also have a special version of that called pancreatic tumor eye pearls. We did a lot of work, we do a lot of work on pancreatic cancer, deep learning, and every other thing about the pancreas. And we thought perhaps it would be good to have all the pancreatic pearls together. And we did this because we were also doing a compendium on the pancreas, which is just everything you want to know about the pancreas, and taking all of our lectures, all of our cases, all of our videos, all of our drawings, everything, the bibliographies, everything we have, putting it all together. So it's really a very complete program of everything and anything you need to know about the pancreas. And we are considering, should we do that on things like liver and kidneys, put everything together under one roof. It's something that's, I think, okay to do. It's not that exciting, perhaps, but I think people do find it useful, so we're told. We then have uh, an app on contrast. Remember, contrast is what drives CT. We speak to you on every lecture about contrast protocols. This app is everything you want to know about contrast, but we're afraid to ask. It just doesn't list things. It explains why we do them. It does it in a question and answer format. So we ask, you know, um, do you need to have a physician present if you're giving contrast? We have a, every question that people have. And the way we did the contrast app, we spent about a year gathering cases or rather questions from our nurses, our technologists, our physicians, our referring docs. Everybody gave us a uh, feedback on what they thought they had questions about, what we can answer. And so we built it not just listing facts, use contrast, use contrast. The truthfully, the, the um, actual protocols are in our protocol section, but it's not in the app. The app is, you know, can you give it, can a nursing mother get contrast? You need to worry about hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism in a baby who got, whose mother got a CT scan while she was pregnant. I mean, it goes through all of the questions, you know, what about breastfeeding and contrast? So anything and everything you need to know is there. And we don't kind of mess around with the answers. We don't say, well, you could do this, you could do this, you could do that, you could do nothing, ask somebody else. We give you an answer and we give a reference. And it'll go, although sometimes you can say, well, not every answer I agree with. That's not the point. When there is disagreement, we'll say so, but we're telling you what we do. And again, you can take it or leave it, but if we don't tell you what we do, then, then I'm just giving you a bunch of nonsensical things. So I think that's a very good app, and that's very important. Then we have some subspecialty apps, I would call them, and there's three of them. One is on the foot, one is on the hand and wrist, and one is the coronary arteries. So tell me about the coronary arteries first. It's a very nice app looking at anatomy, looking at some pathology, lots of information, different things. Very simple to navigate, and a lot of people are first getting started on cardiac CT. That would be a great resource. It has lots of diagrams and images and references. Terrific. Then we have the hand and wrist and the foot. Both those apps are a couple of years old. We updated them a couple of years ago. Probably will get updated sometime in the near future if I get someone to help me. Um, they teach you normal anatomy. Then it shows you pathology. The anatomy teaching is with you know, interactivity, so people really love it because it's a great way of learning the anatomy, learning it from different views, different perspectives, and really getting a very good feel on how things we, go, we would go with. So those are two really good apps. Now, if you ask me what's coming next, well, we have an app on the spine, looking at the sagittal lumbar spine and what you can learn and what you need to see on those images. That app will be available at RSNA, uh, and um, that app that will be is, is being finished right now. So RSNA time will definitely be there, and it better be there because it's one of the things we submitted to RSNA. And if we don't have it there, we'd have a problem. But it will be there, I promise. And then we're looking at what else can we do? Should we do more checklists? Should I just worry about adding to pearls or I quiz? We're doing that already, or I lecture. The definition that's constantly upgrading every six months or so. But what is it we should do? Is there anything we should do that we're not doing? And that's really, uh, from the audience perspective, if you think that there's some app 
that you would find useful, if there'd be some measurement tool, something that you would find useful in your clinical practice, let us know. That's what our goal is, trying to develop new apps that really people need and want to use. So um, I think that's very important. Now, if people have any questions, I see Mark DePaulis from GE is online. Hey, Mark. Um, and Deborah Cooper, Contrast app is good. I've used it. Thank you. Uh, if anyone has questions about the apps, this is a good time to ask it. But from a practical perspective, it's, they're easy to get and they're for free. What a great deal. And you simply go to the Apple Store, right, for the apps. CTSS, they're all going to be there in order. You can be more specific and get there exactly. But if you're just not sure, just do CTSS. The Apple Store would take it from there. Um, there any, okay, I guess that's the time is up. All right, so uh, Fernando, keep them up. Dr. Fishman, they're great. We do appreciate that. And hopefully we'll win the end many. You know, that's not the end of the world. We'll make it together this month. But again, we are looking at improving the apps, making them more useful, uh, making them better. If people have any questions, suggestions, ideas for new apps, ways to improve the old app, any comments, good or bad, we don't take it personally. We're just trying to do the best thing possible. So unless I have any further questions, I guess I'll call it a day. I'll let everybody get to work, back to the grindstone, and uh, have a great day.